Zippity doo da, zippity hey. My oh my, what a beautiful day. Plenty of shade shine coming your way. On this episode of Always Go Big, I have the opportunity to interview the number one video influencer on LinkedIn, Shay Robottom. You're not going to want to miss the advice and insight she gives you. One, a video a day. And two, your confidence increases as your content increases. It's the next Always Go Big podcast. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the Always Go Big podcast. I have a special guest. Uh, Shay Robottom, who is the fastest growing video influencer on LinkedIn. So Shay, how are you today? Hey, Troy, thank you so much. I'm doing good. How are you? I am. I'm doing good. I am actually watching. My, my wife is with two of our daughters in Rome oh, and it's wow. me and the boys. So hopefully uh, we don't get an interruption here in, in a minute. Um, wow. But, the, uh, they went to Rome. That's fancy. It is. It is fancy. And I didn't get to go. But that's <laughs> well. a separate topic. Um, so, you know, fascinating. Now you're in Miami, moved yes, there in March. Yes. Uh, yet you were still part of this fantastic, I call it the, the magic in Milwaukee. You, you were <laughs> part of that uh, a year ago. Give us a little bit of a background about how kind of you got started. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, Q, Q mm -hmm. alums. Yeah. So, I actually met him um, through uh, an, an employee of mine, actually, who had found him at the time. And he kind of brought him to uh, mine and Luke's attention. He was like, hey, I think we should meet this guy. You know, he's, he's talking about LinkedIn. We weren't really doing anything on LinkedIn. He was like, you know, I think this guy's just crushing it on LinkedIn. I think he could help us. And so, you know, we were, we were certainly interested. Um, and uh, sure enough, you know, I met up with Q. I think he really got on the platform early and had an advantage just being one of like the first creators there, specifically video creators. I mean, even, even since the time I met Q till now, which has been about a year, so many more video creators have, have emerged. So Q was like one of the pioneers, like he was on it right away and he was taking advantage of it, figuring out the algorithm, all the different functions and, and all that. Um, so, you know, he kind of uh, encouraged me and my partner to start creating video content for our business to attract leads, you know, get some sales and, and all that. Um, so that's actually how I got started. And, and Q was a great, you know, accountability buddy for that, just kind of uh, helping me when I, when I first started releasing videos. But I really like, I really just after a few months realized like, wow, this is even bigger than I thought, you know, and yeah. Uh, my content sort of evolved from just standard like webcam videos to um, more elements of creativity in them, a little more entertaining, a little more try, trying to bring something like fun and fresh to the platform because there's also an untapped market for that still. So yeah, it just took off. And then I ended up resigning from my uh, the company that I founded up there in Milwaukee to focus on LinkedIn full time and focus on helping uh, individuals and businesses do the same. Yeah. That is so cool. I will, I will uh, share with you personally. I was uh, like you, a musician, uh, oh, well, nice. more, more entertainer uh, sure. back in the day. I uh, wasn't as skilled as some of my counterparts, but I loved engaging the audience through mm, rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the one video you did where I think you went back to you, it was almost a music video yet. It was with all of your content just, you know, inspired me to, to really incorporate some of the elements that I have that I'm older now and it's, more of a hobby, yeah. uh, but just bringing all of that in. Uh, yeah. When did you have that light bulb moment where you realized not only is Q on to something, I'm going to take this to the next level. Like when was that moment in your journey of, of generating content right away or? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was pretty early on. Like I, w I would say right away in regards to just uh, uh, realizing how much reach you could get like the fourth video I ever released, like four videos in, so I'm like still getting my feet wet. Um, it got over 40,000 views. And like for, yeah, and like for me, though, and I had uh, 5,000 connections at the time, you know? So like for me, that was really a wake up call, like holy crap, like there's really something here. But then it wasn't until like a few months later that we actually started getting the leads and making the sales. Sure. You know, within two months of posting videos consistently, I had generated six figures 
in revenue for my business just off all the leads that came from my videos. So yeah. that was like the second turning point where I was like, okay, <laughs> it's not just like vanity metrics. Like this is actually producing a result and I need to, it was, I will say it was very easy at that point and encouraging to stay consistent because of the results we were seeing. I think for a lot of, um, you know, people wanting to grow a page online or people wanting to become influencers, it can get really exhausting when you're like doing the same thing over and over and not seeing a result. So I feel very fortunate to have got in at the time I did where it was like instant. In, I mean, it's what everyone in our culture wants. It's like instant sure. gratification. Um, so I just decided to keep going and, and stay consistent. <laughs> well, and, and what I love about all four of you, the content creators that, that I reference, there's more, there's more than four. Yeah, absolutely. there are. Yeah. And Q's whole company too. You know, he's got like Eric and um, sure. Izzy, like they do. Yeah. They do yeah. their own content. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 what I love about it the most, I'm in sales, I've been in sales for, for 30 years. I think your dad is in sales or you have some kind of, uh, you understand the value of it anyway. Uh, yeah. You don't, pitch. you don't give a sales pitch. No. And you generate all that revenue and that yep. is, yep. my goodness, uh, that is the way of the future. Uh, yep. We're already informed. We don't need you to pitch us. It's, yep. it's more personality and that energy. Um, so what now, I, I, uh, I coach some folks in personal branding. Okay. And what I tell them is you have to have something to say. Mm -hmm. Like I won't coach a celebrity that is just good looking or cool, right? They, they have to have something of value to say. Yeah. Yet we all struggle with negative thoughts. How do you, where, where you're at, how do you overcome those, those negative thoughts that you have? Well, for me, it is more, it's, it's, it goes deeper than just negative thoughts. I mean, I've really struggled with depression mm -hmm. and other mental health issues in my life. And um, this actually ties directly into LinkedIn because my way of coping is to talk about it. And I think that is a, a pathway to healing for most people. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we've kind of perpetuated a, a belief in our society that it's, it's like an untouchable topic. Like if you're, if you're feeling depressed or um, like you're having mental health struggles, it's, it's not easy to come forward. I mean, it's, it's just um, people feel like they're, admitting they're weak, I think, when they do that, when in reality, that vulnerability is a sign of strength. And I think when I got on the platform, that was another thing that really helped me to stand out in my content, because I wasn't afraid to admit that I had depression and that I get really, you know, really down. Um, I even, you know, in one video, like, like admitted that I question like my business, like, should I just quit and get a job? Yeah. Like some days yeah. I just feel, and it was like amazing, like the the feedback that I got from that post was like the opposite of what most professionals would expect. Like I got mm. more leads. I got more people mm. that were trusting of me that wanted to reach out and work. Like, how can we work together? I just love your authenticity and all of that. So it's, it's not only been cathartic for me because now I have like a platform and a community that I can just be open with my negativity about, or, you know, my, um, what I'm dealing with inside, but it's also just, been beneficial for my my business because it's attracted yeah. new people to me yeah 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 no that's that's great um so how about like uh, i you know we'll talk about your company in a minute but you, you are now helping others kind of take this strategy to the next level do you have any success stories of someone that took your advice and then they're now blowing up uh, do you have something like that to share yeah yeah definitely so the first thing i'll say is like you know there's a lot of creators that are achieving like high, a lot of reach and, you know, maybe their videos are consistently like very high performing, mm -hmm. but they're not necessarily making any money or, you know, converting any of that. So one, one of my success stories I love to share is a client of mine, Ahmed. Um, he is a creator on LinkedIn. He has a smaller following than I do, but he's just, you know, been putting out a couple of videos a week consistently. And he's now generating about three to four new clients a month from his content. And he, he's a consultant, so he has a high ticket offer. It's like 10 to 20K packages. Sure. So, I mean, that's been transformative for his business. Mm -hmm. And it's especially funny because <laughs> a lot of pushback I get from people is like, well, I can't do LinkedIn videos. I'm not like a pretty blonde, you know? And I'm like, okay, I, I can promise you Ahmed is not blonde. And, <laughs> you know, he might not be as pretty as me, but um, he's attracting the right, the, his target market. And that's what's important. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. My buddy, uh, Peter Lynch has written a, written a book called the ugly advantage. Ah. And it, it talks about just that transparency, revealing it. Um, mm. I, 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 I coach others and that say, cause the excuses always come up. Yeah. I'm not good enough. Sure. Troy, I'm not funny like you and I'm not this. I, I'm don't, not I don't have time. Yeah. I don't have time. And I tell them the greater you suck, the more inspirational you are for others because ah. you're doing it. You're actually that's, doing it. That's so true. Yes. It's such a good point. Like, so I flip it on them. Yeah. Hey, oh, you suck. Okay, great. You have better opportunity than I do then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Explode. And, yep. Oh, my goodness. Now, uh, what if somebody w- is watching this video and they're like, dude, I want that energy. I want to be a part of what she's doing. Um, do you work with folks that aren't in your area? How does that? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, most of my clients, everything is, is remote. So, um, yeah, you know, I think it's pretty much anyone that is in the B2B space is an ideal client because that is where, um, there's just so much potential on LinkedIn right now for organic B2B marketing. And the other thing that's really kind of funny and, and interesting is a lot of these B2B companies are paying to run ads on Facebook and Instagram, which I understand. And that's what I did at my last agency. So that, that can be super effective, but um, it's, it's, they're not the best platforms for B2B and people that log into those platforms are not really in a business mindset. They're typically looking for jokes or to catch up with their friends versus on LinkedIn. I mean, that's your entire target market is there and you don't even have to pay. The attention is free right now. So if you're doing like a paid strategy on Facebook and you're B2B, but you're not doing an organic content strategy on LinkedIn. Yeah. It's a uh, big, big loss right now. So that's like something I've been coming across. That's really interesting. I think people I, just are catching up. I, I think so. I, I, you know, I really do. Um, now, as far as the, the day to day, a lot of times it's, well, how many, is there a formula that you've created that you can share? If you can't share, I, I, yeah. I totally understand that is uh, X per week. Is there any kind of science that you've kind of developed over the last you mean, year? You mean like how many posts per yeah. week? Or, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I'm doing one a day at least. You know, that's pretty much what I aim for is to ha- have a video every single day. Okay. Um, there has been a clear um, divide in the views between pieces of content when they're released close to one another. So for example, if I release a video and then I release another one four hours later, mm-hmm. instead of just showing the first video to all, all of you know my followers, it'll split it and it'll show like half and half. So mm-hmm. I really don't stack content or I try not to because I want to first understand how the original post is going to perform and potentially let it ride should people find value in it. Um, but otherwise, you know, uh, I, I'll post right away again and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, the entertainment value that you bring, it's in your, it's in your genes. A little bit of diva is always good. And, you know, in all of us, uh, yes. <laughs> do you, uh, do you help bring that out of, cause I know that you, you probably have the client that says, I'm not good enough. I can't. Do you find that inner diva in, in who you work with? Is that kind of part of your approach? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was just discussing this topic on another podcast I was on is like imposter syndrome. It's mm. like so many people, so many professionals have imposter syndrome. They don't even realize it. It's like they think that, um, that they'll always find an excuse for why they're not valuable enough yet. You know, it's usually, it's usually not that they don't believe they can get there. It's just, they believe for where they are right now, no one would want to listen to them. You know, it's either like, well, I'm still in college or I'm still new to the industry. Well, I haven't gotten my promotion yet or, you you know, whatever. It's like people just make excuses thinking there's no one out there who would find value in their experience. And that's not true. You know, everyone has a unique experience. No one has walked in your shoes and lived the exact life that you've lived. Mm -hmm. And you have to, you have to dig deeper and channel that and understand that when you're looking at a creator, and consuming their content and finding value in it and you're thinking to yourself wow this is great someone else is also doing that to you you know we're, we're so hard on ourselves like it's like you, you the person that you're complimenting the person that you're mm-hmm. finding value in also very likely has imposter syndrome and feels like oh no one's gonna watch this no one's gonna yeah. care and then they're getting validated because they're like oh i guess people do care and and i think just getting started and being consistent helps kind of hash that out it's usually the confidence like it, 
increases as the content increases too. Yeah. And I think that's why we need more folks like yourself that are transparent that, oh, I could never be like Shay. And, <laughs> and then you reveal this, this real transparent, like, this is what I go through. I, extremely yeah. powerful. Now, what if I'm a W-2 employee yeah. and I'm watching this video and I'm like, wow, I wonder, can she help me? Do you work with W-2 where they, they, they like the W-2 life? They don't want to be an agency. What's the ratio like? Do you help folks like that as well? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I think that it can be really empowering for employees as well, because I have seen employees go into social media, maybe like as a side hustle and, you know, pursue, you know, internet marketing and, and all that on the side and actually grow their personal brand which gets them to a point where they can quit their job. And it's kind of like through social media, they were afforded an opportunity that we really didn't see available for young professionals just a couple decades ago. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. Um, the, The one thing that, you know, is sort of a dilemma when you're an employee and I do come across this with some people I work with is just, uh, feeling or being limited in what you can discuss because of your employer. And I understand that, like, if, you're so, if your boss is watching, maybe you don't feel comfortable going on there and admitting you have depression. Like, I, I totally get it. And for those people, I would just say, do the best you can. You know, like, be as authentic as you can then without jeopardizing your current position if you truly feel you're at risk. Um, but there's still so much creativity and, and fun topics you can come up with as an employee. Now, what would you give um, as advice for uh, twofold? One, the, um, the business owner, and then one for the W-2 as it relates to a first step. Like we know, you've heard all the excuses. And then uh, let's say they're, they're not ready to invest in, in some real coaching that you can provide. Mm-hmm. What's, a, what's a first step? And maybe the answer is the same for both, but what would be a first step? What advice would you give? Just start, you know? I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's it. really, it's the hardest thing for everyone. It's like, you got to just jump off the cliff. And once you're off, it's like smooth, smooth sailing from there. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, I think that a, a hang up for most people getting started is just what do I talk about? Mm -hmm. And, you know, part of what we do in my program, one of the first steps is we break down, you know, what your goals are, who you're trying to attract, what, who is your target market and what are they interested in so that we can kind of frame the content strategy all around what is going to be valuable to this specific group of people. Mm -hmm. Um, But the other thing is, you know, if, if you're in a certain industry and there's already video creators in that industry who are like killing it, who've, you know, amassed a following or providing value and just like super, super inspiring on the platform. Um, there's no shame in going to their page and seeing, you know, what's working for them, which videos are higher performing for them. Why is it more engaging to the audience? Okay, well, I'm in the same industry, you know, it kind of gives you a starting point for what is successful even so that when you're starting, you're not kind of just it's not just a cold guess and you're not just shooting in the dark. You kind of have someone to model after. And I'm not saying, you know, copy their work word for word. I'm just saying, um, take that topic and, and put your own perspective on it and, and make, do your, you know, add your own flavor. Yeah. And, and I think you gave the advice of even reach out to them and offer to do an interview like this. Even if you're in the same field, there's plenty of opportunity for all of us. Oh yeah. And that's like podcasting right now. I mean, that's like, it's, it's having so much success. There's so many young, young podcasters, um, but it's very easy right now to get valuable guests on a podcast, even if you yourself as the podcast aren't, you know, the yeah. quite the bee's knees yet. Um, yeah. So that's been really in- inspiring too, is to see how many mm-hmm. of these uh, more established professionals are willing to get on these podcasts and share their knowledge so that, you know, it gets seen, but also so that the podcast, the, the owner is able to expand their reach as well, which is really inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. Case in point right here. Case in point right here. Yay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I'm, I'm uh, really looking forward to just learning more about what you guys are doing, you know, your business, what, it, what you're looking for, how you can help and, and just share a little bit about that, what the business name is. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. So since, um, uh, exiting Markle, the first digital media company that I founded, I have founded Robotum Marketing. So um, my, our focus is really 
working with individuals and businesses to create an effective content strategy. Most businesses just don't even know where to begin. They, they're maybe putting out content, but it's not, it's not effective. It's not giving them a return. It's not getting them reach. And it's frustrating because social media is really overwhelming um, to the average business owner still. I mean, it's still relatively new um, and it can be really hard to navigate if you don't have uh, the proper tools or the proper guidance. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I work with individuals and businesses to create a content strategy. Um, and how I do that is through a six week video bootcamp. It's a LinkedIn video bootcamp. And that program has, you know, three, three main modules. The first one is content strategy. So I touched on that earlier, you know, really breaking down what are your goals? Who are you trying to attract? Why are you trying to attract them? You know, how can we create meaningful, con effective content that's going to get you uh, not only seen by your target market, but get people to see you as an expert in your industry to ultimately pick up the phone and do business with you. Um, so that's step one. Um, step two is automation. So I teach uh, my clients how to automate everything on the back end so that it's like a well-oiled machine, which makes it a lot easier to stay consistent. So that's a big thing we see is a lot of businesses will start, but uh, the system in which they've created isn't fluid enough to, uh, they, they get exhausted basically sure. is what happens and they can't maintain it. So the second module is really all about automation, how to create systems, how to uh, basically achieve, you know, four to five pieces of video content a week while only giving a few hours of your own time because everything, it, we work with you on the back end to make sure that's smooth. Um, and then the third module is um, just how to actually engage the platform as a user because there's a lot of things that are specific to LinkedIn that we haven't actually seen um, on other platforms. So you really have to understand, you know, how to engage, who to engage with, how, how to take certain actions essentially that will boost you in the algorithm, that will boost you in the feed when it, it comes time for you to post. And then, you know, by the end of the six weeks, you're fully prepared and understand how to create videos that are going to achieve your goals on social media, on LinkedIn specifically. Love it. It's a three act structure. Yeah. yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, awesome. You've been, you've been a great guest. I'm going to let you get back to your day. Uh, this is Thank what you. I always close with is um, uh, in life and in business, never go small, always go big. So you have a, you have a great rest of your week, Shay. Thank you so much. Thanks, Troy. You too.